So generally, as a rule, I really like to concentrate on my zig fishing at this time of year. Coming out of late winter into early spring, the fish are really going to start using them upper layers. You know, we're getting much longer, sunnier days, and those upper layers are going to warm up a lot quicker. The fish, they're always going to be seeking for that warmth, you know, especially after such a long, long, hard winter for them. You know, those rays of sunshine are going to feel really good to those fish. And, and if, if, you know, if your baits are on the bottom, you, I'd say really, you're wasting your time, you know, unless, unless your lake offers lots of shallow areas where you could potentially nick a bite on a single hook bait, I still don't think they're going to be as effective as getting bites and zigs. Particularly the last few years, I've really concentrated my efforts on zig fishing and it's caught me a lot of bonus carp, if you like. Um, you know, carp that I would never have caught on the bottom and not just any carp, like I've caught really good carp, like up to sort of 47 pounds. Um, fish, I fished a lake, um, Dinton, Dinton White Swan, really notoriously tricky lake and um, you get a lot of fish showing over there in the early spring and lots of people scratching their heads and struggling for bites and um, it was actually as soon as I made a switch to zig fishing it just proved to me how devastating it was because it took that lake apart that spring, a lot of people got on the zigs and and the lake was producing a lot more bites than, than, than what it was before, you know? And um, since then I've taken it onto other lakes and it has been just as successful. I don't think there's a lake in the country where zig fishing, where, where, where zigs won't get you a bite. You've got to think, um, the fish are obviously using them upper layers and you're placing a bait in those zones. The other factor is there's lots of uh, hatches going on at this time of the year and fish naturally feed on fly hatches. A zig rig is gonna mimic, if you like, you know, you're trying to mimic an insect or whatever. And um, yeah, a little piece of black foam, even even some blatant colors I've, I've done well on, on certain lakes, you know, colors like orange. But more to the point, it's just about placing a hook bait where the fish are. But at the same time, it still really amazes me how people still don't give zigs a go um, or, or very half-hearted with using them. The uh, common fault that I see a lot is that anglers will, will try a zig or fish zigs in the day, but then they're straight back onto the bottom at night. You know, if anything, I probably get more bites at night than I do in the day. I mean, I'm actually sat here now in session and fortunately I've managed two fish last night, both in the night, and I've, I've sat here all morning today and I've not caught any more since. I can see how it baffles people, how, how you're catching fish at night on a little piece of foam, but you know, it just works, you know, and um, it's something that I think people should spend a little bit more time um, persevering with um, because I, I, yeah, you, you really are missing out on a, in probably one of the big, biggest edges in carp fishing these days, I'd say. I'd go as far as saying, um, you know, the lake I'm actually sat on, I, I've caught two last night and there's not been a great deal caught all week, if, if, if anything. And only last week I actually caught a 40 pound fish on the zig as well. So it's not just a small fish tactic. Uh, the two fish I caught last night was a 32 and a 37. You know, these are big, big carp. Um, it's definitely not a small fish tactic. And in fact, it will probably catch any carp. It will catch any carp in the lake, even the most rarest of carp, you know, carp that aren't getting caught on bait throughout the year. This is how you're going to catch one of them rare ones on a zig rig because it's probably the most natural way of presenting a hook bait. So the times, the times that I like to fish zigs is like, like I say, zig, zigs will work any time of the year, but I think zigs really come into their own in this sort of late winter, early spring period. You know, when we're getting much longer days, sunnier days, obviously the upper layers are going to warm up a lot quicker. And as a rule, I'll always sort of start in that sort of top third. And if I'm seeing fish evidently from up a tree um, or just backs out of the water, then I'll fish my zigs, you know, one, two foot under the surface. But then, you know, on the flip side, once the water warms up um, throughout the spring and when the water has a consistent temperature to the bottom, you know, and it's quite an overcast day and it's not obvious that the fish are in those upper layers, you know, I'll, I've, I've found that sort of half depth zigs can be, can, can, can be better than fishing, you know, in that top third. You know, you just need to be adaptable and try and you know, you still got to work out where the fish are. Just because you caught a fish three foot below the surface last week, 
doesn't mean that the following week you're going to catch a fish you know the fish are going to be three foot below the surface it's all very much weather dependent but at the same time just because the pressure you know there's a drop in pressure and there's a bit of a wind and there's a bit of rain doesn't mean that you need to start fishing on the bottom it just means you might need to just lower those zigs a little bit um even going back sort of in in in, in into the late winter before the early spring sort of that early february period i've actually done really well on much lower zigs you know before the fish come up into the layers because the water is still very cold and it's still very much winter the fish might off you know they might just be a few feet off the bottom maybe just sort of sitting over dying weed beds you know that's a great area for targeting low zigs if you've got dying weed beds in the lake you'll probably find carp there because there'll still be bits of natural food and and holding warmth to those fish okay, so zig rigs as any other style of fishing you still got to get location right and and and, and areas right so the setup that i use for my zig rigs i like to use 15 pound carp line as my main line i just like that the mono offers a little bit of stretch which sort of helps cushion the hook hold you know using small hooks um yeah i definitely feel like you lose You'd, you'd lose far less fish using a mono um, compared to, to maybe a braid. Down from that, I like to use a lead clip, um, a hybrid lead clip with a four ounce lead. I like to use big leads uh, when zig fishing, but at the same time, I want those leads to come off quite quickly. You know, I want them to do the job, I want them to hook the fish, and then I just want them to come off as quickly as possible. So the way I set it up, I like to cut the, cut the arm off the lead clip, trim it down slightly, and then push the tail rubber just over the first groove. That way you'll gain enough friction to hook the carp and then the lead to fall off. The zig material itself, I use 11 pound zig line. It's something that I've used for quite a few years now and I've gained a lot of confidence with it. It's never let me down. Hooks, I like to use a size eight hook. Generally I'll use either a mixer or a wide gate, probably, probably uh, favor the mixer hook. I think that offset point in the hook just gives you that, you know, a little bit of a of a firmer hook hold. And I like to use the small shrink tube just to give it a slight a slight kick off the hook and it also just helps align the hair nicely off the back of the hook. I then add an anti-tangle sleeve over the hybrid lead, lead clip just to prevent tangles. Um, hook baits, I'll always use bits of foam you know I, I don't think you can be a little bit of foam uh, either a little bit of black a little bit of black and red even orange at times just you know just 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 see whatever's working on the day i'll even go as far as flavoring my foam as well i i have actually done really well on sort of a, a squid goo or or, a, or even a garlic goo I, I don't think it's doing it any harm especially of a night you know um, it is amazing how they can see a little bit of foam at night but you know even just with that little bit of smell there it just gives just gives me that little bit of extra confidence and uh, yeah it's never done me any harm either so that's how i like to set up my zigs uh, like i say if it's something that you've not tried much then i'd really recommend giving zigs a go this spring because there's no doubt in their effectiveness they've caught me some really special carp over the years carp that i never would have caught off the bottom they've kept my catch rates really consistent if i'd been fishing on the bottom i wouldn't add half the results so i'd, I'd really recommend giving them a go